Hey everybody, today we are back with another deck from the 2006 format. Now, I've been playing 2006 a lot more lately. It's a very fun format to play. It's a very popular format amongst older players. Um, and I think there's still a lot of room for innovation in the format. I will say, I feel like in the 2004 format, people um, get very passionate about it. I feel like there's a lot of heated debates about deck choices and card choices and things like that. Um, which I think for the most part part is healthy. Um, I'm sure I'll get some comments about this list as well. Um, and so today we are going to be covering a Mutrek deck. Now obviously this deck was made popular by Jason Klasinski after he won the world championships with it in 2006. My list is going to differ from Jason's in quite a few different ways, but I also borrowed incredibly heavily from Jason when making the list here. I've been playing this list for about the last three weeks. It plays really well. Um, I don't feel like it's 100% perfect, but I do feel quite good about the deck. So, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into individual card choices. But starting off here, the strategy for the deck is going to be based around Manetric EX's Disconnect Attack, which stops our opponent from playing any item cards or stadium cards from their hand on the following turn. This is obviously very strong in a format like 2006, where stadiums like Curse Stone, Battle Frontier are very good. Um, switching cards like Switch and Warp Point, Pow Hand Extension, Hole and Transceiver are played in so many different decks. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can achieve this goal. It's either to use Mew EX, which has the ability to copy any attack in play, to use Manetric's Disconnect, or we can just use Manetric itself to disconnect. Now, I think one of the biggest misconceptions about the deck is that um, Mew is the best Pokemon to use Disconnect. And to be honest with you, I find in some matchups, just going straight Manetric is much stronger than using Mew. Now, the obvious thing about Mew is that it can use any attack from any Pokemon in play, so this gives you a lot more options and a lot more strategies. I'm not saying by any means Mew is bad, I'm just saying be aware in certain matchups, Manetric, just attacking with Manetric is going to be a stronger option. Like I said, Mew is much more versatile, has a lot more options, can use your own attacks, can use the opponent's attacks, but just something to keep in mind here. So, starting off here, we play four copies of Mew EX. Now, Mew is probably the most versatile Pokemon the game has ever seen. Being able to copy your own attacks, copy opposing attacks, you can do things like using uh, opponents, um, copying, like, let's say, a Clutch on a Pidgeot can be situationally good. Copying an Elemental Blast on an opposing Lugia can be very good. Being able to use uh, Disconnect, Roselia, just a ton of different options. If you open, Mew is probably the best opener in the deck. And ideally what you want to do is you want to open with Mew EX and then an Electric. Use Recharge to attach a second Lightning Energy and then find that Manetric EX and start disconnecting on the second turn of the game. That is the most ideal setup. However, if you don't have that, like I said, Mew will give you a ton of different options to either um, use things like Jaffrix Foresight, Resilius Flick Poison, things like that as well. Now, I split the electric line here. I went with three copies of Recharge, one copy of High Voltage. The High Voltage is actually an idea from Jason Kaczynski, where if you're not able to get that trainer lock, um, it gives you an option to do a first turn trainer lock. It also gives, um, if you're not able to get that turn two disconnect, it does give you an option to try to lock your opponents out of item cards until you're able to set up that turn two disconnect. Now, I still find the Recharge one to be better, especially if I only open with a single Lightning Energy. That stops me from having to find a second Lightning Energy, so I can just grab it out of the deck. Four copies of Manetric EX. Mainly we play this for the Disconnect. I also want to note that Mega Shot doing 80 damage to anything is actually a really good sniping attack in this format. Um, for a format that it has some sniping options, but it is an incredibly strong sniping option for the deck to have. One copy of Giraffe Break. Now this is, I would say, almost exclusively played because of how popular Jirachi from De Deoxys is being able to shut that off. 
But Foresight's actually really impactful in a deck that plays four copies of Rockets Admins already. Plus, it is designed to shut off Pidgeot. So there's going to be games where you're going to be having a very close game with your opponent, but you're going to be able to admin them to a very low hand size. Use Foresight to make sure, make sure they're not going to draw anything. And you can just straight lock them out of the game with that. I've had more people rage quit on me from Foresight-related attacks than about anything else. Just because they know that once you're Foresight, it's, things are not going to get any better for them. Looking at the top five cards is just so powerful. Disorder can also be an attack. can be a useful attack depending on the situation. Now, here's something that I do differently than Jason is I do play the Lunatone um, Soul Rock combo, basically shutting off all colorless and fire powers. Essentially, this is aiming to shut off Pidgeot and Macargo. Now, the reason that I play this is because on a, almost all of my turns, I'm going to want to use Disconnect, which hits for 40 damage and overall is not that strong in an attack. Now, to use Disconnect, or the way that Jason focused on it was that he focused on keeping a Battle Frontier in play and then using Disconnect to make sure that the opponent couldn't replace it. What I have found to be a stronger option is to play the Lunatone Soul Rock package and then play three copies of Cursed Stone. This allows me to shut off Pidgeot and Macargo, but at the exact same time, also be able to start piling on additional damage with Cursed Stone, which in no way negatively impacts this deck. That extra 10 damage done to anything with powers is huge in a lot of matchups like LBS, Ludi Cargo, things like that. So, um, I have really found this variation to be stronger um, against a lot of the decks in the meta than just playing a heavy battle frontier cap. Next up, we play one copy of Roselia. This is for the Flick Poison attack. This was a very common strategy against LBS where you would trade very closely with them through, throughout the course of the game. And then when you admin them to a low hand size, Flick Poison the Blastoise, and in a lot of situations... That's just going to spell the end for them because they're going to have a very hard time. They're, they're going to have to hit a switch or war point off of that one or two card hand. Flick Poison can also just be a very annoying attack against a lot of decks in the format. Um, Drag Trode and Meta Knight are both also decks that it's, it's really good against. One hole on Electrode. I would like a second one in here. Um, I play just the lone copy. I also think since we're playing the Mentor Engine that you could get away with playing like a whole lens cast form or something if you don't want to worry about the bad opening. But essentially this just bounces an energy. There's also some synergy here with Mega Shot which makes you discard all lightning energy. So one of the things you can do is if you have a multi on the Manetric, you can whole lens electrode, leave the multi, and then essentially you have two lightning energy and one colorless. So when you go to Mega Shot, you only have to discard the electrode and you get to keep the multi. Um, discarding all three lightning, discarding three lightning energies from Manetric EX is really annoying. So being able to keep the keep one is pretty much essential if you want to try to attack on the following turn. Next up, I do play the whole on package here. Um, I've been testing it. Dual Ball just was not as consistent for me when I was trying to get the Lintone Soul Rock combo off very early. It also, in my opinion, adds a little bit more consistency to the deck. And so far, I'm actually really liking it. Um, I don't play a super thick line. It's just four transceiver, um, two mentor, one adventurer, one scientist. And like I said, so far it's playing really well for me. I'm also debating if I want to do something like playing a Holon's Magnemite and then like the Holon's cast form like I talked about before, just to kind of go along with this Holon's package. I, like I said, I had originally TV reporter or Mary's request and then dual ball in there over these spots, but, um, I've just found these options to be a little bit better. Four copies of Rockets Admin, absolutely essential in any sort of control deck, which is something that we're aiming to do. Three Steven's Advice. I find that bench sizes get very big in this format, so um, Steven's is usually going to net you five or six cards, especially against decks like this. Decks that the opponent knows are going to try to control the board and then play down, or admin you down to a lower hand size. Normally, when they can, they'll try to play down as many cards as possible, so they're not drawing um stuff off late game admins so they'll usually fill their bench with different pokemon two elms now i did split it i did split i used to have a three minute three metric line three elms training method but 
Um, generally, I up the Manetric and down the Elm's Training Method just so I'd have a higher chance to draw into the Manetric just naturally or off a supporter. Going Steven's advice and hitting a Manetric is really good if that's what you're looking for, but going Steven's advice and hitting a Professor Elm's Training Method is not going to get you anywhere. Two copies of the Scott. The stadiums are quite important in this deck. It also allows us to search out some different consistency options. Make sure we we're prepping for that big admin turn when we need it. I think you could probably get away with one, but I am liking two copies right now. For ER2, we're playing a control deck. We want to try to control the board, put our opponent in a tough spot. Energy removal 2 just helps us do that. One copy of POW. It's been playing okay. Um, I think it's good in certain matchups, LBS for example. You don't have as much control over the board as you do with, let's say, a Mew Lock deck, but POW in general is just a really strong card, and I think worth devoting the spot to. One copy of Warp Points. Um, I don't really like this. I would like a second copy in there. But um, right now I'm just playing a single copy. Stadiums, three Curse Stone. This is going to be our main go-to. And then we do play one copy of Battle Frontier. Just in case we prize part of the Luntone Soul Rock combo, or um, if, let's say, we're playing against a Dragtro deck or a Mutric deck or a Meta Knight deck, then we do have that Battle Frontier. I will say against Meta Knight, though, I have found just going Manetric EX with the Metal Resistance. And then Curse Stone, if you get a quick enough disconnect off, is usually going to be the stronger option than the Battle Frontier. Um, I think both are going to lead you to. A victory, but I've still been favoring Curse Stone in that matchup quite a lot. Then for the energy lineup, we play nine lightning energy, four multi energy. Multi energy just has good synergy with Mew being able to copy any attack. Um, it just gives you a little bit more versatility there. And then I do play a single copy of Psychic Energy. There were situations where I really wanted to mega shot, but I didn't want to discard all my energy. So playing that one copy of Psychic Energy does help. Um, make it where I can kind of diversify the energy where I'll have like two lightning and then a psychic or a lightning multi-psychic on the Manetric so I'm not losing that third energy and then I can just attach a lightning or multi in the following turn and then keep attacking. So far the one psychic has played really well. Um, you can also argue there is some synergy with the psychic energy and say like Lunatone, Giraffe Rig, or Mew EX but normally it was all based around that mega shot. So that's going to go ahead and wrap up the video for Mutric here for the 2006 format. If you enjoyed the video, please um, make sure to like it. It helps out me, helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, um, please subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video.